my name's Shannon, I'm 18. Uh, hi, I'm Ethan Kells and I am 12. Hello, my name is Mackenzie, I am 16. Hi, I'm Anna and I'm 15. Hi, I'm Poppy and I'm 16. Uh, my name is Evie Dorian, I am 13 and I love singing and dancing, I'm really into them. My name's Connor Kemp, um, I'm 26, um, next Monday I'm turning 27, so it's going to be exciting. Um, and for fun I love to go on walks, um, meet up with friends and I love shopping. <laughs> I really enjoy getting out on my skateboard and I play my guitar, I play basketball, well I don't really know if I will be playing basketball, it's not like I play for a team or anything, I just shoot uh, basketball hoops in my back garden. I play football, I um, always go to YMT every day. I like going to the gym, that's the main thing I do for fun, I like to do, I like to swim. We obviously, <laughs> we obviously like uh, performing arts and musical theatre and all yeah. that jazz and music. And then I, per we both like sports. Yeah. Just different <laughs> sports. Different sports. <laughs> different sports. Um, my life before COVID was very busy. Um, I had a lot of activities and stuff like Irish dancing. Um, I was studying for A-levels, meeting up with friends. Um, a lot of family events because my family's so big. <laughs> Um, so it was always something to do constantly. Yeah, well, back in 2020, it was kind of just like a shock because no one really knew what was going on. I didn't really understand it at first. I didn't really know what a global pandemic like was and what it meant. Pandemic just hit. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, I just remember there being whispers like around school. And then when it was like starting to spread, there was rumours of obviously things closing down and then Stills. everyone was like, this is closing down and Italy's done this and we'll be soon after, America's done this. Mm. And it was just all very confusing. And then everybody was like, no, it's okay. It's only going to be for two weeks. And then it's, it, it wasn't for two weeks, that's for sure. It, when I started getting bad, I, like, I thought, about, thought about going out and like not going back out and just talking to friends on online. At first, I was I was feeling very and very like in disbelief and very confused. There was just like all of a sudden, all over the news, um, saying you have to stay at home, wear a mask, da 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 da. But I just I was thinking in my mind, no, I I, I don't I don't believe this is happening. I don't want to believe this is happening. I wasn't really sure, like I was really unsure of what was going to be my future. Um, obviously with studying, with meeting up, with school, with my meeting Tracy from Cart Connect, like obviously it was face to face and everyone was saying like you're going to have to stay in your house so. I think I was just like, I don't know what to feel. Yeah. Because I don't think I realised how many people it would actually like affect. Yeah. But then, like, when you went on and you saw, like, how it was affecting people and, mm -hmm. how, like, the death rate going up, you just got a bit more, like, even scared for, like, your loved ones, like, your grandparents. Mm -hmm. A difficult time during lockdown was schooling because I had never, like, done the homeschool experience before and my brothers were also doing homeschool and they were being quite annoying. Like, I, like, in the, like, after doing it two months in school, two months off school, of the pandemic, I was struggling with the schoolwork and struggling trying to talk to people online because I just wanted, really wanted to see them like face to face. It, it was just, it was just a lot to take in at the time, and and sorry, I'm struggling, struggling to speak. But um, maybe homeschool isn't as good as I thought it would be. Because it was kind of like, uh, like in school, you have all your friends, you have um, your teachers and things to help you with all that. And I'm going to be honest, but I didn't really realise that school can actually be quite a lot of fun sometimes. And then people who have like underlying health issues and yeah. things like that. And just hearing about people losing their jobs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I wasn't really scared for me, but yeah. scared for other people. It's yeah. probably the best way to put it. It really sunk in whenever my mum was working in it. Um, I was really worried 
um, she had to move out and everything because she was a frontline nurse and she, she wanted to protect me and my sister. So that's never really hit home for me. The struggles was that I was panicking if like someone in my family, like if it's like say like if I like that I got COVID and I don't and I cannot say like if I cannot uh, go out or go out, like get out like just for like fresh air just go for a good walk and like I don't want anyone else in my family try getting it. My mum worked in all the different hospitals so she was being shipped from the Mater to Antrim to the Royal everywhere. So I work in a care home, so I was worried about my old people. My sister being 16, she was, she's was she got a lot of medical conditions, so we didn't want to bring it home for her. Um, so mum just thought the best thing to do was move in to Belfast, um, close to work. She wasn't bringing it home. She was protecting us and protecting herself. I was beginning to worry because I, 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 was, I was in my room almost the whole time. I was, a lot less sociable. It was more no. It was more noticeable at home. I was kind of more thinking it would only last two or three weeks, then we'd all be back to normal. But then I kind of like focused on the word global, and I realised that it was like about the whole world. And then it was like I would thought that maybe this is a bit more serious. I was terrified, <laughs> absolutely terrified. I felt really alone. I felt isolated. Um, I was worried about my sister. Obviously, I was her main carer then. Um, I, did, I was so worried about the elderly as well, um, like how we were going to protect them, how they were going to see their family, how I was going to get to work without bringing it in. And then one of the biggest struggles was definitely practicing for AQ so long and AQ for so long, and then it just getting cancelled, just flat out one day on the news, AQ was cancelled, and that was it. I think for me the greatest struggle was not socialising. Like I love being around people and to lose all that contact, I just felt so alone. It was just a bit of like shock and then finding out that the schools, like the whole thing with like the schools this year, it was like, just didn't really work very well. But um, yeah, the fact that they weren't even using like the practice papers, it kind of made you feel like was everything I did really worth it? As in the sense, I know that I learned a lot, but it really made you think, wow, I spent all that time on something and it isn't even going ahead. I found it good to still communicate with my friends, even just on the phone, and, and what they said to me were very reassuring. And that was the thing that kept me going throughout the first lockdown, because I did understand it was not going to be forever. Um, there was those words from my friends that really pushed me, helped push me forward.